the, the what motivated me and know that I could I could uh, win the Olympia was seeing what I thought was impossible happen, and that was in the '06 Mr. Olympia, seeing Ronnie Coleman not win the title back. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to episode 140 of It's Just Bodybuilding. Dusty Hanshaw, Scott McNally, and myself, Big Ron Parlo. And on today's show, we have Brandon Curry, Mr. Olympia on It's Just Bodybuilding. Brandon Curry, nope. two-time Arnold Classic <laughs> champion and Mr. Olympia. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Just just uh, realized that I uh, was going to set up for this, but uh, last time I set up, my, all my equipment has been moved. Oh, no. And uh, so, <laughs> so I was kind of like, I'm not normally in my normal setup, so I had to make do. So. It's good. Well, it's you good. look great and sound great, so I think we're, we're going to be okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so so tell us where you are right now. Like you're you're at home right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm home. Just just got home from uh, the gym, and uh, we're picking up one of my sons. He got out of school early, so just got home. So it's his dad life. Yeah, just pretty much dad life. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. We had uh, we had one, so, one graduate this weekend, so that was a uh, that was we had a busy weekend graduation. So oldest graduated from high school, and uh, so one's about to get out the house, go to college. So. It's crazy. How how do your kids feel about you know living with Mister Olympia? Uh they don't they don't feel any kind of special way because they've been it's it's all they know. <laughs> it's all they know, man. You know what I yeah, wonder though. Know. So that that's your daughter that just graduated, right? Right, right, right. So I'm trying to think here. So my uh, my now wife, when I met her, obviously girlfriend at the time, her dad was a cop. And I'm an adult now. So like meeting him, it's like not that scary. But what is it like when she has brought like guys home that want to date her and her dad is like one of the biggest fast bodybuilders in the world? Is that like do you get like a little vibe from them? That's what I'm curious about. Uh, mo- most of them. Yeah, most of them. But uh, uh, her, her current uh, boyfriend now is uh, he had some some balls. So <laughs> at, her, uh, at her signing day. Apparently, before uh, he was her boyfriend, he comes up to me and he says he introduces himself and tells me he's going to he's going to date my daughter. And he explains, you know, his family, his sister, you know, he talks about his family a little bit. And I was thinking, oh, huh, this young man has balls. I think I like him. Huh. So, yeah, he's been a pretty <laughs> stand up, straight up guy. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's been he's been really cool. So, uh, yes, he's, he's the only one that's done that. So I was like, that's pretty impressive. Nice. I like that. Nice. That is pretty impressive. That's that's uh that's a funny story. Um what what's the what's what's on your mind right now, man? I mean, you're you're at the gym today hammering away. What's what's the driver right now? Oh, it's, it has, well, well I I took out a I've been out of the gym for a week. So, I was out of the gym for a week. I was having a little hip issue and uh couldn't get it figured out. I was going to my chiropractor trying to get it figured out. Excessive tightness in the hip. But uh, then I hooked up to the new X. I finally found my new X and uh, everything worked after that. I was starting to get better after that. I hooked up to that. So I got back in the gym. This is my first day in the gym in, a, in a, about a full week. So I was like, okay, let me not kill myself so I won't be, you know, suffering. Let's act like I've been out of the gym for a week. So I took it kind of easy today. Plus, it was a blood moon yesterday. So I don't know what kind of effect that's going to have on everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well thought out. Well thought out. <laughs> well, you 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 probably have a bit of vampire in you, buddy. You're one of these uh, Dexter guys that just keep <laughs> chilling it, and uh, you know it wouldn't surprise me a little bit. Um, you know, I I got a bunch of questions here, and one of the themes was like, you know, what's what's Brandon's um, you know driving motivation now? You've been at this a long time. You know, you've 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 uh, been at the top for a, a long time, and and you keep showing up and winning and beating the younger guys and, and improving and all this stuff, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, I'm sure you look at a guy like Dexter with a ton of respect and like, you're, you're sort of like, I mean, he's, 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 he's moved out and you're, you're kind of next in line for that. Like, what is this guy doing sort of thing? And I, I, I feel that vibe about you, you know, like what's the magic? 
What's the secret? Well, shout, shout out to Dexter. Uh, I picked his brain a lot, and he's shared some information with me over the years. So, uh, yeah, when I was coming up, he, you know, he told me to take my time, you know, no rush, and, you know, told me, you know, he gave me some great, great advice coming up. So, uh, just looking up to him, it just took me forever to beat him, you know. It took me forever. I'm like, dude, I can't beat this dude, man. When am I going to beat this dude? Finally, I beat him. And uh, as soon as I walk off the stage, he's, he looks at me. He goes, man, it's about damn time. So right now, my, my motivation is just, you know, I still I still love body movement. I mean, I still love it. Uh, I still uh, you know, just love the challenge. And uh, I like seeing these new guys come in. It's, it's, it's good excitement. And they, these guys actually provide me motivation as they get better and better. I'm just like, oh, yeah, well, let's see if I can still get better, you know, because if they get better, I got to get better to hold these guys off. So, you know, that's kind of the motivation. It's, it's just playing the game. So I enjoy playing the game. Uh, you know, I've been in this sport a long time. I think kind of bulletproof when it comes to, uh, you know, the winning and losing and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. So I'm just enjoying hmm. myself at this point. And, uh, you know, if I can come out with more and more wins and I'll do that. And, you know, this this year I got a goal, you know, won the Arnold and uh, won the Olympia. So I'm trying to make it like 2019. So that's good motivation for me. If anybody can do it. You know, I, I have to also uh, say, you know, bring up the last time I saw you was on stage <laughs> at the oh, Arnold. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was awesome for me. You know, obviously, uh, Mutant was title sponsor. So they were like, oh, you can have a couple of guys give out the awards, right? So uh, they just said, hey, do you want to go and give out an award? And I was like, oh, well, sure. And then they, I, I wasn't even thinking which award. Like, I thought it was just going to, like, walk out with, like, you know, fifth or fourth, whatever. I wasn't even thinking that it would be the first place. And then I show up backstage and Sean's there and he just hands me your leather jacket. And he's like, Kate, I had no idea what was going on. I was there for like a minute. And, <laughs> and then I, I wasn't thinking Arnold was going to come out at the same time. So it was like this funny moment. I've talked about it. But it was, it was cool to see you, man. And you looked so happy. You know, you know oh, what was yeah, that moment yeah. like for you? Just winning another Arnold and, and winning that yeah. Arnold, you know, with that lineup. It, it was a relief because, uh, to be honest, I decided to do Arnold last minute. Hmm. And uh, so last minute, I made a decision. Basically, when I announced the Olympia was going to be in December, uh, we were already getting, you know, having conversations with the committee. They were trying to see if they can get me to compete. But when they announced the Olympia would be in December, I was like, man, that's a long time. So, you know, maybe if we can work this out, I can go in and, and win this one and, you know, take a little break because I got some time and, and see if I can do the Olympia. So basically, we I went to Kuwait, you know, 10 week prep and we got it done. It wasn't ideal, but we got it done. And uh, so I was relieved. I was relieved I was able to do what I set out to do uh, under conditions that we had. So, you know, I was just happy about that, just grateful about it. L- I didn't think about back that, at that. You've got the um, you've got the gap now because that's usually the big hang up for the Arnold and the Olympia is a lot of people don't get it. That's a close gap. By the time you kick the crap out of yourself, do the Arnold, you almost have no time to recover before you're kind of in the mindset of making improvements and coming in for the Olympia. So that's, that's, I'll be curious to see based on what everyone looks like at the Olympia, what they decide to do next year. With that and timeline. Let, yeah. and let me kind of add to that too and say, you've done this before. So with what Dusty is saying, having done it before, what did you learn from that mm-hmm. that you'll do differently now? Well, the first time I learned I need more time because uh, <laughs> coming into uh, the Olympia prep, my body was just doing something different. It was doing something completely different. It, it didn't want to come down like I like I normally would. You know, I was doing a ton more cardio just to make myself come in shape, and the body just wanted to hold weight. So I realized that just transitioning out of one show to that next, it was just man, it was just it was suck for the Olympia. I mean, I never did like you know two hours of cardio just to get ready for a show, but man, phew, that prep was rough. So, and I, and I still didn't come in like the best condition ever, but I was big and full for sure. What do you think was your best look ever? <clears throat> if I go, if I go with the opinions of most people, I think it was the 2019 Arnold. If they like the you know, condition, that full package. But if they like big mass, then it was the 2019 Olympia. Hmm. So uh, that was which one you like? The two seasons. You know, I like to be big and full. To be honest, this is this is fun. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I, I, I would I would say I agree, but none of us actually know what it would be like to be in your physique. Yeah. So I say it as a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funner. You just you just you're just so much stronger. You know, it's just huh. like man, it's just it's just so it's just funner. You know. I was the Ar- I'm one of those Arnold guys. I liked I liked the Arnold look personally. That was that was my jam. Yeah, I, yeah. man, it's it's a nice look. I, I'll say it's a very pretty, very nice look. But uh, I guess you know I've always been that kind of guy that kind of uh, you know had that aesthetic stuff to it. So if I can be kind of like big and full and nasty, then uh, I like it. You know? Yeah. What was your weight at the 2019 Olympia? Okay, now I'm gonna guess. But I was pretty heavy. I think I was, I think I was in the two fifties. I think I was maybe two fifty two uh, at the most. I think hmm. so. I was heavy. That's okay. probably the heaviest I've been on stage. That's yeah, a big was, dude, man. Fun. You 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 have fun, a look man. like it was really something to see. Like I've seen the Arnold from the front row, you know. But walking out on stage and standing with you guys was awesome because the lights there are awesome. And uh, oh yeah, I they mean, did a good just job. looking. Just looked insane. <laughs> I remember just laughing inside. I was yeah. like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, I was like that's and, you know. And I'll be honest. Mo- I'll be honest. That that wasn't one. Of, that wasn't that wasn't one of my best preferred look at this Arnold, but it was enough to win. So uh, under the conditions that we that we set, so I did enough to win. So I wasn't. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. say that was my best look, but it was enough to win. So I was happy with that. You know, I'm, I'm honest right. with myself. But of course, this this Olympia, of course, you know, I got I got to pull it more. So they're trying to get me down to Kuwait. A lot earlier this year, so put more time in hmm. and uh, and, and go, at it, go at it a little bit longer. So I, I respect that, and I'm, I'm, I'll be ready for it. What's the usual time what? length that you're uh, in Kuwait? Oh, uh, man, well, this COVID thing has been different, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay, the Arnold was 10 weeks. Uh, uh, the last Olympia was 11. Um, and before that, before COVID, uh, let's see, it was, I was probably out there. I don't know, let, me, let me get a reference. Master, uh, call a friend. Hey, babe. What's going on with prep for time on open quake? What would not be normal for me if I didn't have those other conditions? We're getting a cameo like, from the wife. Or getting out. You know. Yeah, I was out there for five months in 2019. Oh, oh wow. That's a long time. Yeah. 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 I had one break, I had a two week break, but I was I think it was five months. She said straight. So it just depends. Uh it depends. I mean my first preparation out there was eleven weeks. When I when I broke mm-hmm. out in that win, when I won uh, New Zealand, uh and the uh Arnold Australia. And that was a that was a quick prep. We did a lot in that little bit of time, but it just depends, man. It depends on the conditions, it depends on when I'm gonna get out there, when I'm able to get out there and settle in. You know, preferably we like to, you know, go out there and put in more time because I kinda do everything all at once. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, I probably I, I don't do like uh, off season and uh, contest prep individually. I, I pretty much do it all at the same time. When you won, right. so uh, uh, I was just going to add uh, when you had uh, won at the Arnold. I saw the video you did on it was like on Instagram, I think, and you thanked you know your coaches Abdullah and someone else. I wasn't familiar with who that other guy was, so I was just wondering how do, how does like more than one coach work together. Uh, for you, that was Ahmed. Ahmed's been on my team for Ahmed. two preparations now. Okay, uh, he uh, he's he's actually in the gym with me training, so uh, he's he's pushed me through the workouts, designing the workouts, and uh, keeping up track with all my. He's my log book and all that kind of stuff, so he keeps track with everything that I'm doing nice. and makes the adjustments uh, each each and every workout. So, yeah, he's a uh, he's a, a big part of the team now because my coach. Uh, He's like, man, I'm getting too old to keep up with you because you know he used to train with me, <laughs> yeah, and take a beat just just as much much of a beating as I did in the gym. So <laughs> he's like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so so you're log booking, you're you're log booking everything. Not me, but I, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> log. There, so somebody's recording everything. I th- I don't think a lot of yeah. people realize that you're doing that. I've never yeah. I've never heard that before. Um. What's the schedule like? You're over there. Like, are you training twice a day? Are you in the gym four times a day with cardio and all that stuff? Like, what's going on when you're you're when you're going to Kuwait and you're you're in camp? Yeah, I mean, uh, most most of the, most of the time, most of the preparation is twice a day. Uh, we go to an intense uh, intense 
two a day, and then as, as we get towards the end of the prep, we, we cut up the volume back, and we and we try to start training one time a day as the body starts to come in. We don't want to stress it out coming in too much, but yeah, it's pretty much twice a day plus cardio. We start with morning cardio, of course, and at some point we may add a second session in, so that, that puts us in four times a day. But we're typically we're, we're training every body part in the beginning twice a week. Uh, you know, they're really trying to push the recovery. Once the recovery is good. Uh, it's like, whew, I'm, I'm relieved because once I'm not sore all the time, it just feels good. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 brutal as soon as I get there. We hit the ground running. Nice. Man, do you ever put up, like, day one at camp photos with your contest prep photos? Show people what you look like when you show up at camp? Because I no, know you stay in crazy shape all the time. But nah, it nah, would just nah, be nah. interesting. They laugh at me. <laughs> they laugh at me when I get to camp. I, yeah, they laugh at me. They say I come, I come in there, I come in there, and they say, "You, know, you look like a regular person." I say, "Yeah." Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they have a very skewed I'm, I'm, version I'm, of what regular is. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I'm just like, you, is... come, you come, you come, you come to the prep looking like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what drives you. They just they just they just talk down to you like that. It's so brutal. <laughs> 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 and then, and then, and then, uh, even even some of the workers, like some of the employees, I come friends with some of the guys. You know, clean the gym and uh, you know they, they wax the equipment and put up the weights and stuff. And I get there, they look at me. And I just see them looking at me, and they don't say nothing. But I see them looking at me. I say, guys, just give me three weeks. Everything will look different. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 He's got the equipment manager judging him. He's yeah. like, I don't know, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Said, but y'all see, y'all, y'all see this too many times, man. You should, you should by now. Yeah. Uh, That's I um, classic. What What do you think is going on right now? With there's this buzz about Rami. What do you think's going on? You think you you know what I mean? The the rumors going around. What's your take? Well, I've, I've talked to people around him. I've talked to people that know him and. Uh, I haven't talked to him directly, but, you know, he's messing up. That's all I know. He's messing up, man. He's really messing it up, man. He's shooting himself in the foot uh, by missing, you know, a lot of a lot of events that he, he's supposed to be at. Uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know the reasoning. You know, everybody's, you know, can give an excuse, but it depends on if they believe it or not. That's the, that's, that's the mm-hmm. question. So after so many so many missed events, you got to have some good excuses, in my opinion. So I don't really know. Uh, I've heard some things. You know, I know he put a lot of stuff out there, out there after he lost his uh, – his, his supplement deal about being active on social media and what he looked like and whatnot in the off season. And, you know, some people said, Oh man, he, he may not want to show up because he probably don't look like that on, you know, for mm-hmm. reality, you know, it may not be real content. So, you know, that could have some things to do with it as well. I've heard some ridiculous things as, as far as he texts someone, I won't say the name, but he apparently got arrested at the airport and got held at the airport or something like that. And he wouldn't let him go. And, um, the, you know, I don't know. The guy was like, "Man, you're from Egypt. Why? Do you, they everybody knows you. Why they arrest you at the airport?" You know. So it's right. like, I don't know. So I've heard all kind of different ridiculous things that you know he's you know people have you know have brought up or said that he said or somebody delivered through another message. You never know what's true. That's the problem because you hear so yeah. many things. Uh, but you know, it's just not a good look. Uh, you know, to be Mr. Olympia and just just not show up at these big events, especially when you're advertised to be at these big events. So I know the Arnold was one. <clears throat> The uh, of course the Pittsburgh was another one, and uh, and I know some other promoters have called me to replace him, and some other events as well. So, uh, you know, so it's it's just unfortunate. I know he's overseas, but you know you gotta you gotta you gotta do the the business of bodybuilding, you know. For sure, the the business of bodybuilding is uh, one of the things that I think you've been awesome at. You know, keeping everything tight, keeping everything running and keeping, you know, Brandon Curry's, you know, like you don't, there's no, there's no like crazy shit about Brandon Curry. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you know, you think of like a lot of, you know, you think of like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they, and, and so, um, just, just keeping focused on stuff and not having like chaos around you. Do you think that that's part of the secret of, of just, you know, staying on top? Well, you know, I got I got a family, you know, around me. Take care of. I got a wife that's gonna stay on top of me if I act stupid, uh, you know. So I got I got I got people around me to keep me in check, and uh, they won't let me they won't let me revert back to uh, my my boyish silly ways, uh, you know. So I gotta stay responsible. So 
you know, fortunate to have that around me, those people around me to, you know, stay on top of me. So it's always good. So there's people that's, that you surround yourself with is a big part of it. Yeah, people you surround yourself with. And, of course, I'm setting, trying to set an example as well. I, mean, I got these uh, three boys just, just looking at me, uh, you know, trying to trying do what I do. And, you know, I want to I don't set any, any bad examples. And I want to practice what I preach as much as possible. So, you know. That's just that's the part of being a dad. <laughs> you do, you, do you feel like the um, the the fact that they've grown up watching you um, not only put in the work for your goals, but something that we've talked about many times at my house is a lot of parents will tell their kids like you can do anything you want to do, but then they don't do shit. So I think the kids don't really <laughs> buy it. Whereas in your case, you chased your goals down. They watch you put in the work. They see the successes and the times that fall short and how you react to them. Do you find that that impacts how they're approaching their sports, their schooling, that kind of stuff? I, it does. I think I think I see it in uh, Zoe, the oldest, the most. Uh, she's she's been through uh, a lot of ups and downs coming up in her sports, soccer, and whatnot, and, and coming up through school. I mean, she wasn't even confident that you know she was going to be you know good enough to graduate at one point because she was in a poor situation at, through schooling. But, you know, mm-hmm. fortunately, she, she just has that give up, no give up uh, attitude. You know, she's developed that and she developed that work hard attitude. So we found that, you know, she's been impressing us to she's doing extra work, you know, soccer and she's, you know, hired coaches for herself. And we, we didn't know. Yeah, she's always mm-hmm. she's always busy, always working out. She loves to train. She loves to stay busy. She loves to just put in work because she knows that that's what's produced the results. And that's what allowed her to get better, even whether it's from school or it's from, from soccer. So she's been able to earn everything that she's uh, she's attained so far just through just work effort and just not quitting, you know, and just putting in that work. So, you know, now she's going to school, she's playing for D1 uh, college now, nice. full ride. So it's like, you know, she's been able to accomplish, finish high school. Yeah, oh, yeah. my saying she's playing semi pro this summer, so it's she's, hell yeah, you know, just doing her thing. So she's 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 the first example of you know you know we've been doing things right and kind of hopefully leading her in the right direction and God in the right direction. So hopefully the the other three will follow, you know. But you always got you always got you know that one that may not pay attention to anything. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, yeah, yeah. This, here's a question for you: Does she realize yet by having a full ride? How much money she saved her dad? <laughs> uh, no, because we had we had to spend a lot of money. Uh, she don't know how much we had to spend for that opportunity to happen as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you that, prepaid. <laughs> yeah, you prepaid. Yeah, it must be nice to get a bit of a break on the bill, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, got, you prepay. You put in the effort. Make sure they play the club ball and you know keep them busy and active all year and all these activities. And man, it's it's a lot of money. So you're hoping it pays off at the end. And fortunately for this one. Definitely paid off. Nice. Do you get to live? Uh, do you get to? I, I know you know. As a bodybuilder, I know we sacrifice a lot of other activities. You know, um, you know, we want to take care of our bodies. We don't want to get hurt. You know, we we want to minimize risk. So, do you do you do you find that you kind of live through your kids' sports a bit? You know, the athletic stuff. Because I know there was always an itch to do some athletic stuff, but I always held back. Do you feel like you get a little bit out of your system watching them play sports? I was, I, I was, I was super athletic, so I, I love sports, and and that kind of got in the way of my bodybuilding early on because I was still trying to maintain that athleticism, doing sprints, doing prep, you know, thinking mm-hmm. you know I can get in condition and stuff, and you know I, I maintained that a long time until it finally I was like, man, it's, I, I got to stop this if I want to get bigger, and you know, and just progress in the sports. So I had to give it up. So seeing my kids able to excel and, and be involved. So of course it's great. It just, it just pulls something out of me and I get excited and, you know, it's just, it's just that part of me that I can just, you know, see expressed through them. So it's, it's, it's awesome. So very, very awesome. Cause I miss, I miss being athletic to be honest. And uh, every time oh, yeah. I try, I'm reminded, I'm reminded that it's a bad idea, you know, when you're, when you get a certain <laughs> size and, and you haven't moved around like you used to in a long time. So even though you may be able to do certain things, you, you still, you may pay for it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you may pay for it. Just sure. Give it a tip in it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'd kind of leave it to them. And hopefully, you know, you know, by the time retirement comes, I'll be downsized and, and doing more active stuff. And I'll be able to, you know, show them that daddy still got a spark here and there. <laughs> still move. So, but right now, it's bodybuilding. <laughs> Man. Do, 
do, do you think there's anything you would ever do? Like, let's let's fast forward. Let's say you're let's say you're retired and you're 47, eight, nine. I don't know. Maybe you do the Dexter and you go to your 50. Let's say, let's say, uh, he's he's shaking he's his there. head. No. no, he's got like six Arnold Classics. Yeah, you know, three Olympias, four Olympias. Okay, so uh-huh. so There's let's say Dexter, let's. I'll let that be. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's say you're 40, 48 years old. You wake up tomorrow. You're one hundred and eighty pounds, and you feel great. And you got one day. What do you do? <laughs> one day. Do you go play? A game? Yeah. Do you go? Do you, do you go like yeah? What do you do? Do you go like do you, do you go play a game of football? Do you go like what do you what would you want to do? Just go run track. What would you want to do? Yeah, I'd say I'd, I'd say I probably I probably wake up in the morning and then you know, go to the track and you know get some sprints done, run maybe run some stadiums or something like that. You know, you get the heart rate up a little bit. You know, feeling feeling a little energetic, especially if I have some partners to do it with. You know, kind of give me some encouragement, a little competition. You know, that's something I would there do. I'll probably avoid the contact stuff. You know, I, 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 I've knocked this noodle a little bit too much over the years. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, you're, I, I, you're, you're imagining I, I, that my <laughs> scenario, my, my fictional scenario carries the head damage through. <laughs> and, okay. We could have left okay. that in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, so you, you played some football then? Oh, yeah. I play, and I played the wrong way, so. I'm glad I got out when I did, even though I didn't want to quit. But uh, you know, I got out at a good time because I would have I would have continued to play the wrong way. And we got some we got some people we know that you know you know have to get CT scans and stuff done all the mm-hmm. time. And you know their their heads are not quite right from being in the NFL. So uh, you know, but they teach the they teach the, the kids better these days than they taught us in our generation. So they play a lot a lot are safer, you, a lot better. Are you kind of talking about Is like that, I kind of feel the same like? I played high school ball in the early nineties and I feel like we just used our helmets way more. Like, yeah, it was taking everybody out of their heads. Oh yeah. (laughs) Ear hole and everybody. And yeah. And like putting the (laughs) top of the helmet under the face mask and just helmet to helmet on every hit. Yeah. It was crazy times, man. It was just gladiators, you know, (laughs) kids sitting on the bench, getting paramedics looking in their eyes. Are you okay? You know, like, (laughs) It's just crazy times. Like, like they didn't, so. they didn't even care about concussions back then. There's no telling how many concussions I got. You still play. They didn't care. No, it was just like, I remember. I remember like two real. incidents where I think I, I had a concussion and I was sent back out on the field. Like, you feel good? Okay. Like, yeah. walk know. it off. Walk it off. So, I see yeah, no blood. It, 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 <laughs> it was real gladiator mentality. It was like, uh, did, you know, when you're playing a game, it was some sportsmanship, but it was like, I'm going to take this guy out. I'm going to take this guy out. And then we won't yeah. have no problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember those days. Going, uh, watching like the program numbers. in the movie theater. You know, one of the best football movies ever. <laughs> well, you mentioned oh, yeah. the gladiator thing. Um you know, you, you you must feel like that carried through into what you've had to do, that mentality, the gladiator mentality. I mean, I we, we all associate with it. We all understand that prepping for a show, putting it all on the line feeling. What, uh, uh, you know, how much has that been a part of, you know, your sort of like, you draw on that? Like, how much do you draw on that sort of stuff? Can you think of a time recently when you've had to really pull it, you know, really make yourself fucking toughen up? Well, it's, it's always it's always like uh, I say leveling up to the challenge, you know, as uh, you know, I don't I don't mind to fail. But damn, if I if I quit before I fail, you know, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's that it's that kind of mentality uh, that I that I developed. And, uh, you know, I just being a sportsman, uh, you know, all, all through my life. So it's always, you know, just, you know, the last thing I wanted to do was give up. Uh, so being able to push through and no matter what and being able to take your knocks and get back up and do it again. Uh, that's just uh, this just the part of the mentality that I think, uh, you know, being a sportsman it kind of develops in you, you know, because you can't always win. You recognize that you can't always win, but you want to always win. So it's just that that's what drives you. So, you know, you, we know that we can't always win, but you know that if you keep working and if you get the right conditions, you, you know, you're going to win. So you get you kind of get that thirst for it, you know, you thirst for winning. So it, the thirst for winning kind of kind of blinds you to, you know, how much you, how much you had to lose in order to win again. So that's kind of like what I developed, that tough skin, that mental toughness when it comes to that, because it's like people could talk all kind of junk, all kind of trash. I'm used to that. 
I'm used to that. We talk trash. We talk junk all day. But, you know, unfortunately, I couldn't knock you in the mouth for doing it on, on, like I did on the football field. But in body goal, I could just, you know, internalize it, go in the gym and, and say, y'all, hey, look at me. What else you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know? I took, I took you know, your so, money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, I'm coming in. Yeah, I'm coming in to take your lunch money. You know, you, you know or, or, or oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your favorite bodybuilder didn't win. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, not sorry. You know, that kind of thing, you know. But, you know, that's just uh, what do we call it? The dog. We call it in football. We call it the dog. In you. So, yeah, that, that dog in me has been able to help me handle this sport of bodybuilding because I think some people, you know, they just take it, they take it too personal, like, uh, hmm. and they kind of fold when they don't, uh, you know, things don't go their way. And things ain't been going my way my whole life, so I just had to make a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a question Man. for you. When, when was it that you truly realized that you could win the Olympia or the Arnold, like before it happened? Because I remember, I mean, obviously – I've been following you forever, and I can't even remember the placing now, but I remember your breakthrough Olympia when you were in the top 10, and I remember thinking, like, oh, here he is. Like, I think everyone was kind of waiting for you, and I want to say you were eighth, ninth, something in there, and I remember that show. You were kind of one of the highlights of the show. Was that when you realized you could really, really do this, or was it before that or after it was before. It was way before. It's something I couldn't. T- I couldn't tell nobody. It was more of a. Uh, it's more of an intuitive, uh, kind of kind of experience for me. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the what motivated me and know that I could I could uh, win the Olympia was seeing what I thought was impossible happen, and that was in the '06 Mr. Olympia, seeing Ronnie Coleman not win the title back. Mm-hmm. I happen I happen to be uh be and they be there to see that, uh by by pure pure chance. Uh, I didn't have a ticket. Uh, I, I was at the show with some models that were doing the road for the pros model contest. We had the same manager, and we, Flex Wheeler was supposed to put me on a list. Uh, apparently, who knows if Flex Wheeler put it on, put me on a list or not? It didn't matter. But uh, when we all showed up together, they we walked in. They said we all looked apart. The they let us go upstairs to the. We used to have a weeder booth at the top, so we went up there. Free mm-hmm. drinks, free food. Nice. Ronnie came out to his posing routine. I was like, okay. Came out as the bodybuilding Ten Commandments Moses, you know, dressed up. And yeah. I was like, okay, he's about to win. He's about to break this record. I can't believe I'm here to see this. And then they announced Jay as the winner after after the routines. And I was just like, the whole crowd went nuts. Hmm. But for me, yeah. it was like dead silence and tunnel vision. And I was like, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be on that stage. Let's let's go after it. So I went from that point making bodybuilding uh, a hobby. Didn't think I was gonna be a pro bodybuilder at the time. It was a hobby, but I took it from a hobby to a job in my in my mentality. And uh, and then it was like well, that was 2006. So 2008, well 2007, I did my first pro qualifier. I got second as a heavyweight at the USA's, and then second again at nationals. And then in 2008, I won my pro card at the USA. So that kind of sparked me. That's when I knew. But knowing is is when the battle starts because, you know, I got that success. I had that fire. And then I got my first Olympia. I got eighth place. Mm-hmm. And uh, then then it was like an uphill battle. Then then life started to hit me. And it was like, OK, you really want this? Do you really believe this is going to happen? So I had to fight and, and resist, the, you know, the temptation of doubt. Mm. And continue just to pursue it, no matter what happened, no matter who called, you know, who said I was done, no matter, you know, you know how many people said I couldn't do it. I had to still believe that, you know, you know, from the foundation of what I believe, I had to still hold on to it. So when things started to turn around in uh, 2017, it was mm-hmm. just like confirmation mm-hmm. that, OK, now this is the time. This is the door that's open. Uh, you know, this is your time to, you know, full speed ahead. You would have got all the right conditions. And there's no there's no no chance that you can't can't do this. So then the next year in 2018, uh, I got fifth place, mm-hmm. and uh, Sean had won that year. And the previous year, Sean was fifth place. So I was like, okay, that's that's it. That's all I needed to see. Hmm. Sean was fifth, and he won the Olympia, and I'm fifth this year. I'm gonna win the Olympia. So that's all I needed to see. So I was just looking for the opportunity and my time. I was I know I had to be patient, uh, and that's the hardest part. That's the hardest part. Knowing something, wanting something, but having to wait for it. That's the hardest part. Hmm. 
That's freaking awesome. I, I, I love how you brought that in because from the outside, it was, I, I understand the doubters, meaning I understand they always exist. But as someone who really like loves bodybuilding, I don't know how they could doubt. Because looking, even when you were coming up, it was very obvious to anyone else. It was like, well, if he makes the decision to win the shows he wants to win, then he's going to win them. You know what I mean? There's certain people that just have that thing. So it's crazy. I didn't even, I didn't even catch the fifth to first thing until you just said it. I was like, oh. Yeah, that's, that's funny. <laughs> I, I, also that's find it, I also find it really interesting that you picked that, that Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler moment as like a trigger. Because, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's so fascinating to me how much of an effect events like that have on so many people. You know, and when there's a champion toppled, it, 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 I mean, just think of how many people must have had the same similar type of experience from that. It's crazy that, that that moment made you believe anyone could, well, like, it, it that's, was, that's, that, it, it was, yeah, it was impossible. It, I thought it was impossible yeah, for to get beat. I only, I only saw everything in the magazines, in the magazines, right? Yeah. And I figured, I know what I you said, mean. it's my first Olympia. I wasn't supposed to be there. And what am I seeing this for? This is, right, you know, this right. is, this is, you know, that's what, that's hindsight. Doing the process is like, oh my goodness. It's like, it overwhelmed me, you know, <laughs> it overwhelmed me. And it was just like, I just seen the impossible happen. Now what am I going to do about it? I just met all the celebrities and people I've seen it only in the magazines. Like, this is a first class treatment. Why do I have this first class treatment? Why is it now? Hmm. Where, where am I going from here? You know, what, what mindset, what do I need to change about my mentality? Because that was just fun and games for me at that point. But it was like, okay, you know, I, didn't, I was looking for purpose at that point in my life. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sitting there saying, God, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, you're on the right path. Just keep on going. You know, I didn't know that. Awesome. But that was my confirmation that I was on the, on the right path and I just needed to just keep on going. Because I had no idea what I was going to be doing. I was going to be graduating from college. You know, basically, I started bodybuilding with student loan money after I quit playing football. You know, I didn't know what I was going to be doing. So I did my first contest through the loan money. And, uh, you know, it, it paid off. I was able to pay off my student loans with bodybuilding money. So it paid off. But it was just like at that point in my life, I was just looking for purpose. And I'm just looking, looking, waiting, watching. And uh, when that when that hit, it was like, OK, here we go. Let's go. And it's been a ride. It's been a journey ever since. <laughs> That's amazing. Who, who? Thank you for tuning in to another podcast here at Think Big Bodybuilding Media. If we've provided value to you today, then please consider contributing to our show. You can help support the show through Patreon. Every $5 helps to pay for the software and the hardware and everything else that goes into making a podcast. You can also contribute by using our code at True Nutrition. True Nutrition has been our title sponsor for several years now. I'm super grateful for them. And I've believed in True Nutrition supplements long before they sponsored our programming. You could use our code THINK for health supplements and performance supplements. Feel free to hit me up if you have any questions. And if you're in Canada, check out supplementsource.ca. They have free shipping over $99, huge discounts on overstock, short dated, and label change products. Plus, they have all your normal supplements too. Thank you guys for listening to the commercial. I hope you're having a great day and that your bodybuilding is going well. Let's get back to the show. Who were who your like um, inspirations when you when you first like started, you know, really bodybuilding, like what physiques were you looking at? Uh, you know, cause you've created your own look, you know, like you have a signature look to your physique, you know, and, and I'm just wondering what physiques you were looking at and thinking, fuck, well, that guy looks un- un- unbelievable. In the, in the magazines, I remember looking at the magazines, you know, I wasn't super like in the body boom, but once I started lifting weights, I started looking at the magazines because I was looking for football and stuff. So I would, every once in a while, I would grab a magazine off the shelf and look at it. So I was looking at through the magazines, and uh, I'm like, Lee Priest was one of the first, like, in the Twin Labs ad. Just knowing that he was like, <laughs> like, not knowing at the time, but seeing that ad with the, with the cutoff shorts and the, the the high boots and the Twin Lab he, black and white photo, I was like, man, that guy looks crazy. Like, and then I found out he was like five three, five nothing. I was like, what? <laughs> it's amazing. And then I saw some classic photos in, in a magazine of Sergio Olivia. They did a Sergio Olivia di- edition. And that cool cube photo uh, yep. with the Rolex. Oh, yeah. It just it left such an impression on me. I cut it out the, the magazine and put it on my on my wall. 
on my mirror. And I was like, man, that's that's crazy. I want to I want to look like that. I want to have arms like that one day, you know, and it was like, that's nuts. So he made an impact on me. And then it was uh, I, I remember seeing when Kevin LeVron went bald and I was, mm-hmm. he was in the magazine. And he was just <laughs> like and I'm like, man, I was like, this is nuts. And, you know, and I, and I was real critical of Ronnie back in the day. I was like, oh, I don't like this about him. I don't know why, you know. And then I started to learn bodybuilding. You know, I was ignorant. So I was all, I was critical of the champion. So but the more I learned and the more respect I got for Ronnie. And then I got to work with Ronnie and I got to talk with Ronnie, be around Ronnie. And uh, that Ronnie mentality was like, this is incredible. This hmm. guy's like, he's different. You know what I'm saying? He's simple, but he's super intelligent. But he's just different. He's just different. He's like a different animal. Like when I'm meeting him, his mentality and uh, just being around him was like interesting because uh, I was like, man, this this is this is a, a complex human being here. You know, we typically think of bodybuilders. We got this, you know, they always, you know, put this meathead mentality. But Ronnie, even though he's just such an awesome character, he's a very complex person. And he's almost like simple to a fault in some ways. I think he simplifies himself in some ways just so he can do like these incredible things. It's like those 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 quotes, those are just simple quotes. Uh, nothing but a peanut. That's a simple country quote. But it's like it helped him like the mentality of thinking like that is just it helped him accomplish so much. If he could just put it, oh, it's nothing but a peanut. You know, what's the peanut? It's, yeah. it's a peanut. And if you can transfer that mentality into into the gym you know just as simple as that is it could do things for you you know what i'm saying so it's just just watching guys like that and then dexter when i met dexter uh dexter was like he was a rival before he was a, a rival because when i first met him i was i wasn't even a bodybuilder yet. he was at a show i was at he was talking to this one chick that i knew i worked for and she came to introduce me to him and she's like show him your bicep so I show Dexter my bicep, and he looks, he goes, Psh. like, that ain't shit. <laughs> I'm like. That's a good impression. What? That's a good impression I'm of like, Dexter. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I'm like, this dude. And then I see him at the Arnold, like, like a couple years later. Yeah. And not thinking he remembers me, but as soon as he saw me, he went, he did the same thing. Psh. Oh. And I was like. I'm like, he remembered me. I was like, I, I didn't even, you know, I was like, he remembered me. And then I was like, man. <laughs> so come around t- 2008, uh, we walk into the Victory Gala, me and my wife, and we run into him and Gail, and we end up walking to the Victory Gala together. So I ended up talking to him. And, uh, you know, he's he's in a real good mood, of course, because he just won. And he <laughs> said, you know, he said, he's like, he's like, you know, so one day this could be you, man. And I was just like, yeah. So I'm like, he knows who I am. And I obviously earned his respect because he ain't giving me that, that, that same uh, thing he was giving me. So <laughs> yeah. we went later that, that day. We had a, well, later that, a couple months later, we had an appearance together in uh, St. Louis. And we got to hang out a lot. So he's giving me a lot of advice. And I realized he was a real cool dude, but he's super, like, competitive. So, uh, you know, that I admired it about him because he's always trying to get in people's heads, like seeing him around Jay. It was just hilarious because he was just always acting, but always talking trash and always trying to get people's head. Like, I remember him coming into Australia where he was like, Australia, he came in and he was eating a bag of candy. And he threw it on the table and said, anybody want some? <laughs> and uh, and Epperson Apani was so pissed. He walked out of the room. <laughs> He's like, this guy. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Dex, I'm like, Dex is a genius, man. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, so I gained a lot of respect for him and then seeing what he accomplished, it's been even crazier. So, you know, he, he's one of those guys kind of just challenged me to get better, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then William was another guy who came up and he, he, he kept on. You know, he was. I remember I came to a show and he was disappointed because he was expecting me to show up. He said, "Come to this show. I was going to do my best. I know I was going to kid against you, and you didn't even show up. So what's no. going on? What's what the hell's going on with you?" So it's like guys like that has kind of kind of been able to push me through my career. But just just seeing those magazines and and seeing some of those accomplishments, you know, seeing some of those physiques back in the day, it was kind of like, man, I can I can kind of look like that. You know, I can kind of look like a Sean Ray. You know, man, Flex Wheeler, he kind of looks nuts. Like, what in the world? You know, I could kind of look like that, you know? So it's like those guys, you know, made it made it seem like I could kind of be some version of that. 
But uh, of course, I, I, I didn't want to be like anybody. I just wanted to be myself, you know, make my own way. Man. So what do you th- what do you think of that? Do you, do you ever stop and uh, think that there's a, you know, a kid out there? How old were you when, when you had, you know, that uh, photo of Sergio on your mirror? 15? I was, probably, I was probably, like, I probably like 17, 17 years old or something like that. Yeah. So how, what, what do you think, you know, the concept that your your photos on, you know, somebody's locker, somebody's fridge. I used to, I had a, I had a picture of Ronnie on my fridge, <laughs> you know, I had a picture of Dorian on my that. fridge one year, you know, I, you, you hear know, that sometimes. Know. That's, sometimes, sometimes you hear that. Sometimes you get guys that come and they tell you different things like that. And it's like, it's like, whoa, it's like, really? It's like, this is, a, you know, it kind of just sets you back. Hmm. Uh, you know, some guys tell you they started bodybuilding because of you. Hmm. Or when somebody says they lost sixty pounds because of you, it's like, man, I'm just glad people pay enough attention to be motivated by something I do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's humbling, but it's it's cool at the same time because you know we need that. You know, we need to we emulate as human beings. You know, we emulate. That's just what we do. Mm-hmm. So we have to find something positive to emulate. Otherwise, we're gonna emulate something negative hmm. subconsciously. So. Uh, just finding something positive to emulate is, is always something that you want to do. I mean, just I think of Lee Haney, like when, the way he carried himself. And it's like, man, I'm like, that's something I want to emulate. You know, mm-hmm. he set that standard. You know, Jay Cutler, man, that's something I want to emulate. You know, it's like so, you know, you can't be just like somebody, but you can you can emulate some of the things that you admire about people. What do you think, uh, like, how do you manage your, your social media interaction with fans? Like, I know you're on Instagram, you reply, like we're talking, but I mean, you, you, you must get clobbered. So like, do you, do you have like any strategy for how you run your social or do you have help doing it? Like, what, what do you, you know, what do you do? I, uh, I take my time and, uh, I try to answer everybody that I think is sincere, hmm. honestly, uh, I take my time with it. I try to answer everybody sincere. If they got a sincere uh, question or, you know, comment, I try to stay active because I realize these, you never know who these people are and, you know, what situations that they're in. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of take my time as a part of my giving back. Uh, but when it comes to like uh, handling negativity, I, I, I'm entertained because, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, it should be the people that you know that can, that can hurt you the most, not the people that you have no clue who they are. You know what hmm. I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. I'm like, you, you, you think you get, you think you really could come on here and disrupt my day? Well, you really just, you just entertaining me, you know, to be honest. So, uh, and I'm, I'm always curious about like what's going on in these people's lives to where they have to, you know, you know, find things on social media to be negative and criticize about. I mean, I kind of feel sorry for them at some points, but you know, I just like to, you know, I like to make sure I give people my time when I can. Of course, I don't want to be on social media all day. Yeah. But you know, if anybody yeah. messages me, you know, and they, you know, legitimate, I'll get back to them. You know, uh, I don't have no problem with that. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a human too, right? And I, I was that guy one day, but of course, there was no social media. So if I ever wrote somebody, yeah. you know, I would hope that they would respond back back to me, right? You know, no doubt. Um, if if I were if I were to like if you were to look through my Instagram, you'd see I follow like a bunch of shark accounts. And a bunch of BMX stuff, and a bunch of uh, science, and that Na- National Geographic, and cool houses and stuff. What would I see on your Instagram? Man, you see so much stuff. Uh, you see dogs, other than bodybuilding. You probably see some dog okay. stuff, you know. Uh, dogs, lots uh, of dogs. Yep. Sharks, ocean yep. stuff. Uh, you know, the, anything science, uh, anything you know, the sun. Uh, the only thing there was solar weather. Uh, Anything dealing with, uh, let me think. Hey, shoot. I got to see you scroll through my social media. Yeah. Anything dealing with, uh, <laughs> anything educational, uh, archaeological, okay. ancient stuff, uh, you know, let me think. Are you following all the exotic cars and stuff? Are you into that stuff? Are you like cars and shit? No, no, no. No, I like cars, but, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, like a, Supercar enthusiast. I got too many kids to think about how how, how like nice cars. Maybe if I retire, I'll be shopping on what, what cars to buy. You know, but for me, for me, it's more it's more nature. It's more uh, you know, it's more like interesting people, funny people. 
And sometimes I follow accounts that I think are weird because I just I just want to see, like, how weird are they really? You know, right. Like people are like, why? Are you, why are you following that? I'm like, well, this is weird. I just want to see how weird it is. Like, is this real? Life? You know, is this really real like life? vegan cats? I'm like, like, there's this, there's this, uh, there's this uh, animatronic, like, I don't know, fake human account, right? And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. okay, what's up with this fake? What's this with this fake human account? Like. What are they trying to do with this? What what are they trying to project? Like, what is this? What's the point? Yeah. So I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I'm a curious person. So I just follow stuff because I'm just curious, you know, and I'm just trying to see, okay, where are they going with this? You know, what is what's the point? (laughs) And of course, food, you know, you follow food stuff, too. You know, Always. Of course. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) And if you're and if you're and if you're Scott, you follow all the gun all the guns. Absolutely. All the, guns. Oh, all the competitive yeah, yeah. shooting, oh, all that. that oh, I, well, I like the, I like the animal stuff where, you know, you got the brutal, the brutal the nature's metal kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Metal oh, yeah. Is, is. yeah. You know, that kind of, that kind of stuff is always cool to see too, you know. That, Just anything I, that's, that's, like that's, that, that's, that's, that's a crazy page because sometimes I think that it's actually good to remind yourself that nature is metal. Like, cause yeah. we live such, we live such a removed from any other reality in any point in history. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when mm-hmm. I watch, sometimes I watch that channel and I'm like, wow, like we're still part of that. We're the, you know, yeah, we're still, bit. that's still how the world works. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. exactly. something about it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I gotta go train legs now. And then I follow like how the world is like actually changing in, in certain places. Like, uh, like I like to follow like the weird weather patterns and you know the, you know the different storms and different different things that are happening all over the world, flooding and everything like that. I like to follow stuff like that too because it's just very interesting how the Earth is just you know it's like waking up in a different kind of way. So I think we're going to get to a, what they say another pole shift, I guess here here soon. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna that's gonna rock everybody's world. We don't know we haven't ever experienced that as as far as generations on Earth. It's happened before, right. but not when we were here. So hmm. that's going to be something, something real different. So I'm just waiting to see, you know, <laughs> waiting to <and> see. <laughs> I, had an, I had enough to worry about with the economy, and now you've thrown a pole shift into my, yeah. <laughs> into my worldview. Yeah. I was like trying to decide on other things, and now I got this if, I can deal if, with. If, if they don't ruin us, you know, na- nature will. So <laughs> yeah. we're screwed either way. <laughs> yeah, either way, yeah. Either way, you know, you know, we're gonna see some crazy things happen, whether we with the calls or not. <laughs> so do you have do you have like an extra an, like an extra deep basement and a bunch of canned food on hand in case no, you have to like no, you no, know no, shelter no, up? No, because because apparently apparently uh, with a, with a pole ship, you know. There's a lot of things that may happen that, you know, you can't really necessarily prepare for. There's some people that are trying to prepare for it, uh, trying to predict what locations are going to be hit the least. But in, in the general sense of things, it's, it's almost like a restart. Uh, it's going to, huh. you know, you're going to take you down back to the Stone Ages, uh, you know. So uh, I don't think as much you can really do about that. If you, I don't know if you want to survive it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Be, you I, I actually gone. see that. <laughs> <laughs> It's more yeah, about living yeah. it up until that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah I want to live right as here, long you know? as I can without living like Mad Max. Right, exactly. Yeah, like exactly. Right up I'm until sure. Mad Max. That's as long as I want to live. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Exactly. So, exactly. I, I don't have to. I don't have to be here for all the all that stuff. You know, just, that doesn't amuse me. You know. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I'd rather, I'd rather, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> can't live forever, so I might as well. I live when it's good. <laughs> I back what's that. uh yeah yeah what's what's uh what's the plan right now you're gonna you said you're gonna head to kuwait to get ready for the olympia but you got some time to kill before then yeah it was, it, we, we originally predicted around august uh heading out there to kuwait uh but you know well, that's subject to change of so talking to some some coaches and, and maybe when we do a pre preview and then come back and whatever so we'll see We'll see what my schedule permits because my schedule is uh, – I got to ask my wife about my schedule to look at my calendar because between my schedule, my kid's schedule, what I want to see when I'm home, you know, that I got to balance all this out because it's busy. 
that's wild. Do you li- yeah, I, I had a bunch of questions here. I don't know if Scott had any or Dusty had any that they want to fire off. I'm just here but, for the um, ride. You're just here for the ride. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, you've done this I've got, I've like got, I've got one I would like to ask, though, while, while Ron was looking okay. for some stuff. I, I've just been wondering, you know, I mean, I, I look at competitive bodybuilding and I think about, you know, I guess I see a lot of people, they do, and I was this person too. I did my first show. I had no expectations, right? I'm just happy to be there. And then after you do okay, then you, you know, you have expectations that, okay, now I want to be better than that. And I feel like you have a really good perspective overall on, on just this whole thing. And I, I was wondering maybe what you could share with us about that. Because when you get to the point where you win the Mr. Olympia, it's like, I can only imagine, you know, we put so much pressure on ourselves. I got to do better than I did before. And I've seen a lot of people, they really start to dislike bodybuilding because that pressure gets built up and they say, no, I'm just going to not compete anymore. I'm just going to lift to lift because this is too much. Um, if there's anybody who's experienced a lot of pressure, it's a guy at, at your level. So could you talk a little bit on that? Oh, well, you know, you got, you got to really like love it. Uh, you got to really like love what you're doing and remember why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, we started all this, this sport out. We didn't start it out to just to win everything. Cause we didn't know none of us really started out. So maybe feel he started, he's only working, <laughs> started to lose, you know, started out with just winning everything, you know, but most yeah. of us, you know, we had, we had to win and lose some, you know, win and lose some. So, you know, you just kind of remember, you know, why you started, you know, you know, where your roots are. So no matter what you, what you accomplished, uh, you know, it's just like you got to put yourself in, in that place. You're like, okay, you know, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta face reality here. You know, at the end of the day, I can only do my best. And you know, we're in the sport where I just can't knock a man out. You know, I can't, can't take his lunch money. I, I have to, you know, be, uh, be, uh, you know, looked at by judges. And I don't know what's going on in these judges' heads. And I don't know when they're gonna change their mind or, or what genre they want. It's only so much I got control over, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna enjoy this process. Uh, give my give my best my best effort, and you know if 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 I happen to fall on my face one time, then I know how to get back up and continue to go again, try again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as far as you know, when it's time to give it up, yeah. You know, well, when I don't have that passion for it, and I don't I don't feel like I can I can pull together my greatest package or a bet a good package or good enough package, and I say okay, I, I'm gonna sit it down, or maybe maybe just maybe these boys of mine are just doing so much that I just want to be a part of it. And I want to travel and do something else and watch them and be a fan. So yeah. whatever the reason is, it won't be because I'm jaded. It won't be because, you know, oh, these guys, they treat me unfairly. And I, I don't want to be a whiner and complainer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Too many whiners and complainers mm-hmm. in, in this world. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be one of them. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I want to be. So in order not to be in those those shoes, I got to, you know, just be, be real. Be real and realize that, you know, I'm doing this because I love the sport. I'm, I'm able to do it. I'm blessed to still be able to do it. I'm still healthy, and uh, I'm gonna enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey. You know, I wasn't promised anything, hmm. and nobody owes me nothing, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, so I might as well just enjoy my time, and 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 the next generation is coming up, and just seeing these guys coming up and being there to see it, because I'm really enjoying seeing the next generation of guys coming up. You know, I'm, I'm just imagining what it was like for Dexter and Jay and them to see me coming up. <laughs> And and then I'm thinking, okay, I'm in that position where I see all these young guys coming up, and I'm I just want to be there to be like, okay, guys, you know, I'm I'm still here to beat you, but you know, you're gonna be on top one day. Uh, you know, maybe I won't be around for you to kick my ass, but maybe I will. Who knows? But uh, until then, I'm gonna encourage you, you know, to be the, your best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat you like a good sportsman, but you know, I'm gonna spank you sometime on stage, you know, when, when we get on there. So <laughs> it's just it's just one of them camaraderie things, you know. I'm a, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just. I don't know. I love the sport. I, I love the, I love, the, I love people in general. So mm-hmm. you know, I just want to, you know, make sure I'm just, I'm having a good time and enjoying myself and enjoying the experiences with, with the experience I'm, I have. You know, you know, everybody doesn't have these opportunities and experiences. So I'm very fortunate. That's a cool perspective. I feel like your perspective. I feel like your perspective is crazy because I just had a client reach out uh, four weeks into a diet, and she's done this before. Um, and she's like, the motivation isn't there, wasn't there this week. And I told her, I'm like, I think you need a perspective change. Like, think about how lucky you are to get to do this as yeah. opposed to, you know, I think it'd be very easy. I mean, even for someone like me watching you, my mind goes, man, it's got to be hard to be over in Kuwait 
while his daughter's playing soccer, his boys are playing ball, you know, his wife's at home juggling all this. It's got to be so difficult. But I guess if you look at it from a different lens, you're fortunate to be able to create their ability to do those things by doing what you do. I mean, it's, I think perspective is just an amazing thing. And just hearing your way of looking at all of this in this hour has been nuts. It, it kind of makes you seem invincible because of how you're, how you view things. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been through uh, the trials and errors and I've not always had the right perspectives. I remember when I used to get upset when I, cause I lost. Hmm. And then I eventually, I got to the point, I was like, you know what? I wasted a whole bunch of time being upset, being moody, complaining. For what? Like, for what? Like, <laughs> for what reason? You know, it's like, right. all because I, I'm, I'm too much into myself and other people around me can't, I can't enjoy other people around me. I can't enjoy, you know, uh, just, just some downtime because I'm still kicking myself in the butt over something that I wasn't able to do. And then I realized, you know, if it's not for me, it's not for me. You know, if it's hmm. for me, it's for me. You know, and, mm-hmm. and I realized I don't want I don't want something that's not for me. I really don't because it's gonna that's gonna come with problems. It's gonna come with things that I don't want to come with. So you know, if it's for mm-hmm. me, if it's for me to, to have this, I, I'm, I'll take it. I appreciate it. But if it's not, all right, congratulations. It's you you know, enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Hope you uh, you you know, hope it's enjoyable for you. You know, but at the end of the day, it's like I can't let these. I mean, ups and downs are part of life. You know, you just can't sit there and just beat yourself up because this is it's really a waste of time. You just you wish you, you put yourself in a space to where you're not even jo- enjoying life or enjoying the people around you. And it's just like, why be there? You know, why be there? You don't have to. It's a choice, right? Yeah. And it's okay. a cool perspective. And I feel like I, I and, and that's the reason I'm asking, because every time I've had a chance to talk to you, I get the vibe that you just love bodybuilding. And I feel like it, it, it would be cool if everybody could feel that same way. And I, I've got one follow up just because you mentioned the new guys that are coming up and you've been here for a little while now. Um, can you think of, like one guy that stands out to you, and I'm sure there's a bunch of them because there are so many good bodybuilders out there that are coming up now. But can you think of like one guy that's coming up now uh, that you that you that it, I'll put it this way that's caught your eye? Let me let me say it that way. Well, well, this guy I've been watching, I've been watching, and I've been you know picking his brain and just seeing how he moves. And I think he's in a in a transitional phase to where he's he's kind of getting his his mental state together. He's got the right connection with his coach. Chemistry is good. And I talked to his coach uh, extensively about this process. And uh, just seeing Derek, spending some time with Derek, I think I spent time with him the past month, well, four weeks, maybe two two, two weekends or so. We, we, I see him in St. Louis, and I also see him in the Pittsburgh. We train together in St. Louis. So just seeing his different mindset from from previous, huh. uh, you know, you know, seeing that he's not dealing with as much anxiety, seeing he's, he's kind of centering himself. And he's just he just seems more mentally stable. So I think with that and the progress he's making, he's a very dangerous uh, competitor coming up. And he being nuts. that he was able to cap- capture the title, you know, that that's definitely was a boost because I know how hard he took it when he wasn't able to and he had his expectations. Mm. So I just think he's in, a, he's in the right space, the right combination. And as long as he stays there, and he's doing everything to where he's creating stability, stability in his life. Hmm. And that's really hmm. important. So. I see that that's that's going to be he's going to be really, 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 really dangerous if he stays on this right path, you know, because I'm impressed and I, I, I'm not afraid to tell him, uh, tell these guys, you know, I'm impressed. Uh, you know, I see what you're doing. That's why I talk to Honey about him, because I'm trying to see, OK, what's going on? Like, you know, I want to discuss the whole conversation, but I just want to know, you know, because I'm, I'm curious, you know, I want to see these in the right space. And, you know, I, I, I'm rooting for those, these guys to do to do good, you know, and come up and, and, and be champs. So. I see him. I see guys like Hunter. You know, Hunter's got a whole, a whole community around him. You know, that, that knows what this sport is about. You know, I see. I see. He got. He's, he's gonna. He's, he can't help but have the right mentality. You know, somebody's gonna put it in him. You know, yeah. somebody's gonna give him, <laughs> give him the perspectives he needs. You know, so seeing guys like that coming up, coming up, uh, it's very very cool. There's, there's another guy I, I ran into uh, at the Pittsburgh, a physique guy. Uh, man, I can't think of his name right right now. He got second. To Sadiq, uh, at the, I'm not uh, sure who that was offhand. He got he got second to Sadiq at the Pittsburgh man. Uh, his name slips my mind right now, but man, I seen a kid on stage at prejudging, and I seen him uh, in between, and I just stopped him and I had to just tell him like, man, you know, I don't tell a lot of people this, but you know, you got that it thing. I don't know what it is, but you got it. And I just said, you know, 
I don't know if he's going to be able to stay in his class if he keeps, keep training legs, but you know, <laughs> it may not be for you. So, you know, I, I just, uh, <laughs> I just see things like that. And I'm just like, damn, I see potential. You just can't help but like encourage these guys with potential because, you know, somebody done it to me. And, uh, you know, I just feel like it's just, it's a must that you do it to, you know, other, these other guys because, you know, they may not have, you know, you're going to hear a lot of negativity and, you know, I've been there, done that. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, uh, if I can share some, some of my insights, some of my opinions of what I see, uh, I'm always, I'm always uh, trying to make myself available to do that, you know, especially in person, you know, person, cause yeah. you, can, you can send somebody message, but in person, you know, they, you know I'm, 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 I'm not just blowing smoke with you, but I see something going on and I just want to, I don't know where you are mentally, but I want to encourage you, you know, this is how it is. So. I've gotten that from you, man. I, I feel like I've gotten that from you personally too. And, and that's, that's why I think that you, you had been such a great Mr. Olympia. Cause I could see you having the ability then with, with more, even more, um, um, pe- more people noticing you, more people knowing who you were, uh, you had more of an ability to even share that. And that's cool, man. I, that's, that's, I think part of that love of the sport that, 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 that you're giving back, you know, you're helping people yeah, yeah. that are part of the sport. Yeah, you want it to be better, better after you leave. You don't want it to be worse. You don't want to say, ah, my heyday. I hate to hear my heyday was the best day. <laughs> I mean, man, that's just like, that's like old sour stuff, man. Forget that, man. Let the sport be better after you leave. You know, don't worry about, oh, you know, you can't do it like us. Screw that, man. Nah, nah, nah. Y'all do better. Than yeah, that, yeah. Man. We train so hard. We train so hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, come on, guys. Um, I, mean, I, I got to ask you about some all. of the news. Oh. Now, I was just Sorry, saying, I, I realized all the there, conditions, but... the conditions that are different versus like, you know, we talk about the magazines, you know, the magazines don't exist. So you said you're comparing every edited picture to all these social media pictures they just throw up out of anybody comparing errors. You know, it's like you can't do that. They, they, they filtered everything that you saw back in the day. You know, the technology was different. The back, the back lighting was different. The backstage was different. It's, it's all mm-hmm. these things are different. So it's not not a real way you can really compare these things, because you know we didn't see the the raw unedited versions of most of these guys. You know that's why we we idolize them so much. You know, but now it's the world is not like that. As soon as they try to get pictures up as quick as possible, yeah, no editing. Yeah. You know, guys in the crowd taking pictures. You know, camera phones and all this kind of stuff. So you're gonna see guys not in the best light. All True, the and uh, guys using the uh, the magic mirrors in the gyms too. Oh yeah, we love that. Magic <laughs> you know, we got to keep we got to we got to keep that's that's a part of the competitive thing though. You got to keep everybody guessing, right? You know? you yeah. Gotta, you know, you post a magic mirror picture. You know, it's not for it's for the fans, yeah. Yeah. But it's for the other guys too. You know, Let's get the wheels, <laughs> get the wheels going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to ask you about some of the news this week. Uh, we had a few people. I had a few people ask for your opinion. Um, one of the greatest, one of everyone's favorites, Flex Lewis announced his retirement this week. What's, what, what do you feel about that and, and Flex's career? And just love to get, you know, you're such a respected guy. I'd love to get your opinion of, of the decision and what you think of, you know? Well, I'm happy. I'm happy for Flex because I knew, I knew he was pretty much at that point. Uh, you know, you, you know, he's at the game three years, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, he's been at the top. I mean, what else does he have to do, to be honest? You know, what else does he have to do? And he's influenced mm-hmm. so many athletes uh, coming up that you can you can literally see his influence in other athletes. I don't know if you watched uh, uh, Raphael Brando, right? Yeah. He's trained with Flex. He's trained up with Flex. But when I saw that guy on stage, I was like, man, that's, 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 that's Flex, Flex S. Hmm. Just the way he, he he portrayed himself, you know what I'm saying. So he's left his he's left his impact on the sport and his legacy on the sport, you know. And at at that point, it's like, what else does he have left to do? You know, he's got a new son now. I'm so happy for him that he, he was able to have a son because you know we all want sons, right? We all want to continue that <laughs> legacy. So I mean, I mean, it's it's like man, that's like that completion point, you know. So I grew up, I grew, grew up coming, I came up with flex. I put it that way. We came up together. We were na- kind of like neighbors at one point. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, you know we had a lot of camaraderie. You know, we in the same gym at one point, and we were always like always competitive with each other. I, you know, we we race on occasions, and uh, you know just do just do stupid kid stuff when we were younger. You know, just because we we're just so competitive. So I look up to him and his drive, and what he's able to do as an ambassador for the sport, 
And I and I kind of know the inside and what he what he put in to be a good ambassador for the sport. So he really did the business of bodybuilding. He really, uh, you know, really took some notes from the greats and, and put it all together to make, you know, his own little legacy. So I'm happy for him. And, you know, he knows it. He knows his time. So I respect his I respect his uh, his decision. And I know he's got some things he really wants to focus on, you know, outside of bodybuilding. So, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm happy for him, man. That's, uh, you know, he has nothing else to prove. Nothing. Given everything that you've accomplished, all the shows you've won, the capturing the Mr. Olympia title, um, you know, proving yourself over and over, how many years do you think you got left in the tank? What's what's your preliminary plan right now? If you, you are you are you looking towards a five year plan or anything like that? It's it, it's coming it's coming it's coming coming soon. I guess I can I can kind of sense. That is, it's coming soon. I'm at that point in my career. I don't know exactly the time. I don't want to put a put a stamp on it. I hate to be the guy to say I'm done and come back. Uh, okay. But uh, you know, I feel like it's, it's 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 approaching, and uh, I, I'm in a I'm I'm getting in a, a pretty good spot to hopefully be able to to walk away uh, gracefully from the sport uh, without you know with everything intact. But I don't have a, a necessary set date right now. I'm still enjoying it. I, I listen to Dexter when he says, yeah, I still got the passion for it. I still got, I still, you know, I still want to be competitive and I can feel that, you know, I can feel that. You know, I may not have that as long as he does. He did, but uh, mm-hmm. I feel that I still, I still like to be challenged and push myself. I'm still at a position to where I can do the things that I can, I need to do to make myself better. Uh, but if, if, if I see in a sense that that's, that's not the case, then, you know, it's about that time to, to move on. So, you know, it's coming. I'm realistic, but I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know the time. Maybe if I have a dream one day or maybe if I get a, a good little message or maybe something significant happens, I'll be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's, 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 it's today's the day or maybe two years is the day. I don't know. But until then, until I get that, that marker, I, I don't really know yet. So I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just uh, watch, wait, and uh, be patient. Well, Brandon, thank you very much for, for your time, man. We've uh, been talking about getting you on the show for a long time, and uh, we've talked about you on the show many, many times. <laughs> so I don't know if your ears are ever burning, but it's, uh, it's good to get you on, hey. man. And, uh, hey, it's your job. It's your job to talk about bodybuilding, right? And uh, I don't care if it's positive. I don't care if it's negative. I don't really care because it's your job to talk about bodybuilding. If I don't, if I don't want to hear about myself, then I won't listen. <laughs> but if I want to hear about myself, <laughs> then I'll listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, I was talking to I was talking to Jose about that. He said, you know, I said to him, I said, man, Jose, it's your job to talk about bodybuilding. I don't care. You're a critic of bodybuilding. Right. You're a critic. It ain't gonna bother me, man. Do your job. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna hold it against you, man. <laughs> Well, uh, okay. So well, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, we don't, we, we don't, uh, we don't rip you too much on this show. I don't think so. We'll have to go through hey, the back catalog. You did, it's all good. You did, it's all good, man. I'm a grown man. I wear big boy draws. I, you know, I, I can deal with it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate your time. Good luck, uh, in the, in Kuwait. Good luck in your prep. Good luck at the O. We will see you there. All right, brother. Yeah, have a good one.